Hey guys, welcome back. So we're going to take a look at creating a metal type shader. What we're going to try and do is break up the surface value to make it feel a bit more worn and a little bit more battered up. So I've got a very simple little scene here. It's just got a background piece of geometry and some duplicated spheres and just three lights that are lighting it from the top, the left and the right. So selecting the sphere on the left hand side I'm going to apply a material onto it and I'm going to apply an air nose standard surface shader so standard surface here and we can see that by default the air nose standard surface shader gives us a kind of a plasticky kind of highlighted surface I'm currently rendering through the render camera here and just for the next little bit I'm going to select just to render some region just across these three just here just so I only render within this space. So for the next sphere just here, I'm going to add another Arnold surface shader. And I'm gonna come in to here and I could add it here. It can be handy to add it to your favorites and the way to do that is middle mouse and you do need to push the middle mouse button down and you can drag and drop it onto the words favorites. Now I've done it already. Uh, so I'm not going to do it again and you can see that it is just stored under here now the advantage to doing that is that I can right click here and I can come down to assign favorite material and here you go here's Arnold's standard surface shader and it's just a little bit faster to do it that way now in this case it appears exactly like the other one but I'm going to try and make it feel a little bit more metallic uh, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on balancing up our shaders and I don't need to because there's some presets that ship with Maya. So to give it more of a metal feel, just to start off with, I'm gonna set it over to Chrome. Now I highly recommend you go through the other ones and you can check what attributes are changing in the attribute editor. So I'm gonna change this over to Chrome and we can see that one of the things that's happened is that the metalness value here has gone up to one and that has made it feel more metal. And the other thing that's happened is the roughness has gone down to zero. So this is getting my, my metallic surface and this roughness value here is determining how smooth or how broken up the surface is. So it can be a little bit sensitive, this slider. So this is the value that we're going to try and drive with a map. Okay, so that's what we'd call chrome and I might leave it down about 0 0.1 here. And let's just jump on to the next one and we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. We're just trying to build up the look as we go. So we go step by step and here we go and we're going to turn it over to chrome here and this time i'm going to try and drive the roughness here with a map so i'm going to click on the little checker here go to file load in my file and inside my source images for this particular uh, set of practicals i have a few different uh, images and now our specular maps or the the way i'm going to drive up the breakup of the surface i generally want a more high contrast map so black in this case will be smoother and white will be more rough so i could use this one or potentially i'm going to use this one as well we'll give this one a try just to see how it looks okay and i'm going to drive it here and you can see that it has not done what i expected when we want to do more advanced editing of our materials we need to use the hypershade you'll get to with this little button here so this is the hypershade just need to make sure I've got the right material so I'm going to rename this material and we'll call it a broken uh, broken up metal just to make it easier to find okay and there it is there and I'm going to right click on it hold the right mouse button and go to graph network and it's going to draw out the graph of for this material so here is the Arnold surface shader node and here's all the attributes that are on it. And we plugged in an image, this wall image into this particular attribute. And there it is right there. Okay, so there's our wall JPEG. And we can see it just over here. So these are the nodes that sit underneath any particular material. And if we want to see all the individual nodes, we come into the hypershade and we can get access to them. And in this case, what we can see is that the out alpha 
for this particular image is driving the specular roughness and this is actually our problem okay this image that we've brought in is a jpeg and it does not have an alpha so what we need to do is we need to open up the out color here and i need to take the out alpha and plug it in to the out color now it's a black and white image so i'm going to plug it into out color or out color or is now driving the specular roughness and if i just move this out of the way we can see that now that is much more like what i had expected so that's a little bit of a gotcha with the out alpha because there isn't an alpha on a jpeg image but that has turned out quite well and you can see it's broken up the surface quite nicely for me so i recommend uh, trying to come into the hypershade and get comfortable with what's happening in here graphing the network is quite a useful thing to be able to do and having a good understanding of what's happening underneath the hood in maya is always going to be beneficial as we start to do more advanced topics like lighting and shading